Hello friends, in this video we will discuss about liver function test and its interpretation in detail. So basically liver function tests include following test, estimation of bilirubin levels, estimation of liver enzymes and determination of synthetic functions test. Bilirubin means it includes total bilirubin, direct and indirect bilirubin. Liver enzymes include alanine transaminase that is ALT, aspartate transaminase that is AST, alkaline phosphatase and gamma glutamyl transferase. And synthetic function tests include INR and serum albumin. We will see details of each of these tests in the subsequent slides and also we will see changes in this test in case of different liver diseases. So do watch full video for complete understanding. First of all, bilirubin metabolism. So understanding basic bilirubin metabolism is must for understanding certain concept. So bilirubin is basically degradation product of heme and other heme containing proteins. Heme is converted into biliverdin and then it is converted into unconjugated bilirubin with the help of certain enzymes. This unconjugated bilirubin which is also called as indirect bilirubin is water insoluble or lipophilic bilirubin. So it is not circulated freely in the circulation. So for that purpose it is bound with albumin which is known as bilirubin albumin complex. When this bilirubin albumin complex reaches hepatocyte, bilirubin enters hepatocyte or liver and albumin dissociates. In the liver, bilirubin is conjugated with glutathione and it is known as conjugated bilirubin or direct bilirubin. And this direct bilirubin is transported or transferred in second part of duodenum with the help of biliary system. From duodenum, bilirubin is carried to colon. Here, bilirubin is converted into urobilinogen and stercobilinogen and majority of these compounds are converted into stercobilin and are excreted in the form of feces. Very few amount of these compounds, approximately 6 to 8 percentage, enters the circulation bag and goes to liver. This is known as enterohepatic circulation and very few amount of urobilinogen is excreted through kidney in the form of urobilin and this gives normal yellowish color to the urine. So coming to normal values of bilirubin, the total bilirubin is around 1 to 1.3 mg per deciliter. Direct that is conjugated bilirubin is up to 0.3 mg per deciliter and indirect or unconjugated bilirubin is around 0.2 to 0.9 mg per deciliter. One must know about one variant of bilirubin which is known as delta bilirubin. Its half-life is about 14 to 21 days in compared to normal bilirubin which is around 4 to 5 hours. So, if patient is having delta variant of bilirubin, it takes several days for bilirubin to come back to normal after recovery and it sometimes becomes clinically significant. Now coming to causes or approach to hyperbilirubinemia. It can be indirect or direct hyperbilirubinemia. If unconjugated bilirubin is more than 85% of total bilirubin, the cause is likely to be hemolysis. And genetic causes of indirect hyperbilirubinemia includes Gilbert syndrome and krigler nazar syndrome. And in case of direct hyperbilirubinemia, if conjugated bilirubin or direct bilirubin is more than 85% of total bilirubin, the cause is mostly obstructive. And if conjugated bilirubin is 50% of total bilirubin, the cause is usually hepatic. And genetic causes of direct hyperbilirubinemia includes Dumin Johnson syndrome and Rotter syndrome. I would like to add some points about urine urobilinogen. Normally, urobilinogen is present in trace amounts in urine in the form of urobilin, as we have seen in bilirubin metabolism slide. It does not cause positive test reaction, and urobilinogen in urine is increased in case of hemolytic anemia and liver diseases like cirrhosis, drug induced or toxin induced liver injury. And absent urobilinogen is seen in obstructive jaundice. Now this was about bilirubin. Coming to liver enzymes. There are four liver enzymes as you have described in first slide. We will learn each of them in detail. First of all, transaminases that is AST and ALT. They are present in hepatocytes and leaks into blood in case of liver damage. As I told, it includes aspartate transaminase AST which is also called as SGOT and alanine transaminase that is ALT which is also called as SGPT. 
AST apart from liver is also present in heart, muscles, kidney and brain. So, it is not specific to liver. But ALT or SGPT is present only in liver. So, it is specific for liver injury. You can remember ALT L for liver. The normal value for both is around 10 to 40. Now, causes of raised AST and ALT. As we have discussed, any form of hepatocellular disease or biliary disease may cause rise in both AST and ALT. But rise in AST can also be seen in case of rhabdomyolysis, acute myocardial infarction and hemolysis because AST is also present or expressed in certain tissues like heart, muscles, kidney and brain. So it is not specific to liver whereas ALT is specific to liver and it is present or increased in case of hepatocellular and biliary disease only. So we should know what are the pattern of increased or raised AST and ALT. In case of acute condition or acute hepatitis, AST and ALT values may rise up to thousands and the causes include acute viral hepatitis, drugs or toxins induced liver injury, ischemic hepatitis, acute Bercheri syndrome, acute fulminant Wilson's or acute bile duct obstruction. And in case of chronic pattern that is chronic hepatitis, AST and ALT are elevated but the values does not cross 150 and the causes includes non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, chronic viral hepatitis that is hepatitis B and hepatitis C, autoimmune hepatitis, Wilson's disease, hemochromatosis and cirrhosis. Sometimes extra hepatic conditions can also cause minimal rise or chronic rise in AST and ALT and two examples you must remember include celiac disease and hyperthyroidism. Usually, ALT rise is more than AST rise in most chronic liver disease which is not caused by alcohol. So, alcoholic liver disease has some specific pattern and you must know it. So, AST and ALT are elevated in alcoholic liver disease but usually it never crosses more than 300 to 400 values. And AST is to ALT ratio which is also known as DDT's ratio are elevated. So, ratio of 2 is to 1 are suggestive of alcoholic liver disease and ratio of 3 is to 1 is highly suggestive or almost diagnostic of alcoholic liver disease. This low level of ALT in alcoholic liver disease is due to deficiency of pyridoxal phosphate. So this is the range of AST and ALT in various etiologies we have discussed so far. As you can see normal range lies around 10 to 40 in case of chronic viral hepatitis and chronic alcoholic hepatitis values does not cross above 300 or 400. It remains around 2 to 300 chronically. But in case of acute viral hepatitis, ischemic hepatitis and acute drug induced hepatitis values crosses more than 1000. So now coming to alkaline phosphatase and gamma glutamyl transferase. Both of these enzymes reflex cholestasis that is obstruction to the bile flow. Alkaline phosphatase that is ALP is collection of isoenzymes present throughout the body. It is present in liver, bone, WBCs, placenta, etc. Gamma glutamyl transferase that is GGT is microsomal enzyme present in liver, renal tubules, pancreas and intestine but not in bones. This is the specific point to remember in this slide. So the causes of raised ALP includes hepatocellular cause, obstructive jaundice, bone lesions with rapid bone loss, example Paget's disease, hyperthyroidism, etc., biliary pathology like primary biliary cirrhosis and pregnancy. And causes of race GGT includes hepatocellular cause, biliary pathology, alcohol abuse which is one of the specific cause, diabetes and renal failure. Remember friends, GGT is normal in case of bone disease because it is not expressed in bone as we have seen in the previous slide. Now, if you have elevated ALP and elevated GGT, the probable cause or etiology will be hepatic or biliary disease. And you have elevated ALP with normal GGT, the probable cause is bone disease. Then, if you have normal ALP with elevated GGT, the probable cause is alcohol abuse. So, these were the causes of raised ALP and GGT. Now, there are certain causes or disease with decreased alkaline phosphatase level. The classic example being Wilson disease with fulminant hepatitis and hemolysis. Here ALP is severely reduced and in case of hypothyroidism 
pernicious anemia, hypophosphatasia, and zinc deficiency, ALP is mild to moderately reduced. Now coming to last portion of liver function test that is synthetic function test. First is albumin. It is synthesized exclusively in liver. So it is marker of synthetic function. Normal level is around 4 to 5.5. Its primary function is to maintain capillary oncotic pressure. And its significant is low level of serum albumin is seen in chronic liver disease such as cirrhosis and reflects severe liver damage. In patient with liver disease, Serial fall in serum albumin indicates bad prognosis. So it is one of the prognostic marker in liver disease patient. Next is INR. Prothrombin time is measure of extrinsic pathway of coagulation which includes clotting factors 1, 2, 5, 7 and 10 which are produced by the liver. PT varies significantly in different laboratories. So international normalized ratio INR is calculation that normalizes the prothrombin time so that different values or different labs can be compared. And the causes of raised INR include severe liver disease like acute hepatitis, cirrhosis, etc., vitamin K deficiency because certain factors require vitamin K for its production in the liver. It includes malabsorption, prolonged antibiotic uses, etc., then disseminated intravascular coagulation and drug and toxin induced liver injury. So this was all about liver function test in a nutshell. Now we will see how to apply this knowledge practically. So liver injury can be of hepatic pattern or cholestatic pattern. We will see changes in different liver function test in case of hepatic pattern of liver injury and cholestatic pattern of liver injury. So first of all bilirubin, conjugated bilirubin that is direct bilirubin is increased in both type of liver injury. But unconjugated bilirubin is normal in cholestatic pattern because there is obstruction to bile flow after conjugation of bilirubin. So only conjugated bilirubin is increased. Next is urine urobilinogen. This point we have already discussed. Urine urobilinogen is absent or very much reduced in case of cholestatic or obstructive pattern of jaundice. Then AST and ALT. It is increased in hepatic pattern of liver injury. It may goes up to 1000 in case of acute hepatitis or it may be around 200 to 300 in case of chronic hepatitis. But it can be normal or mildly increased in case of cholestatic jaundice or obstructive jaundice. Then coming to alkaline phosphatase and GGT. As I discussed, ALP and GGT are marker of cholestasis. So these both are increased in cholestatic pattern of jaundice. But it is normal or very mildly increased in case of hepatic pattern of liver injury. So these were the basic difference between hepatic pattern and cholestatic pattern. Now coming to evolution of abnormal liver function test. This table is given in Harrison. So if you have suspected liver disease, you ask for liver function test. First of all, you see whether it is acute or chronic, that is symptoms of less than 6 months or more than 6 months. You divide both acute and chronic liver injury with hepatic pattern and cholestatic pattern. In hepatic pattern, ALT is elevated and in cholestatic pattern, ALT is mildly elevated with significant raise in alkaline phosphatase and glamaglutamyl transferase. So in case of acute hepatic pattern, further workup includes marker of acute hepatitis, then ANA and SMA for autoimmune hepatitis, monospot heterophile for infectious mononucleosis, ceruloplasmin for Wilson's disease, and alcohol and drug for alcohol and drug induced liver injury. And in case of acute cholestatic pattern, workup includes AMA, for primary biliary cirrhosis, drug history for drug induced liver injury, an ultrasound, MRI, MRCP or ERCP to rule out surgical cause of jaundice or any obstructive cause of jaundice. Then in case of chronic hepatic pattern, diagnostic evolution includes HBSAD and anti-HCV antibody. Remember friends, hepatitis B and C both go for chronicity. Hepatitis A usually do not go for chronicity. The next test includes iron saturation and ferritin for hemochromatosis, ceruloplasmin for chronic Wilson's disease, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, ANA and SMA for autoimmune hepatitis, ultrasound and alcohol history for cirrhosis. Then for chronic cholestatic pattern of liver injury, evolution includes drug history for drug induced liver injury, AMA for primary biliary cirrhosis, ultrasound, MRCP and ERCP for obstructive pattern. 
or surgical cause of jaundice. So after this diagnostic evaluation, the cause is still unknown, one can go for liver biopsy. So friends, this was all about this video. I hope you like the content. Do like the video and share it among your friends and also subscribe our channel. Thank you.